Have you ever wondered why some writers are really good and most other writers are just kind of average? Or why some writers can progress and learn really quick and other people it kind of just takes forever? In today's video, we're going to break down what will make you jump skill levels fast and what will keep you at the same skill level forever. The first step to becoming a better rider is having a clear goal in mind, a clear destination as to where you want to get to. This can vary in different ways. For example, your goal might be to be an A-class rider, your goal might be to be able to hit 100 foot jumps comfortably, your goal might be able to learn how to wheelie. Your goal simply needs to be something that excites you, something that will make you the rider you want to be. My current goal as of making this video is to learn advanced bike control movements such as static balance, riding backwards, and more. Once you have a clear goal in mind, the next step is to have a strong why. And a why just simply means having a clear reason as to why you want to achieve this goal. When looking for a good why, skip over all the light reasonings and go into the deep reasonings. I could say I want to learn bike control because it would be cool, but if my only why was to be cool, I'll likely never complete the goal. Instead, my reason as to why I want to learn bike control is it's one of the first steps to becoming a great rider. Why do I want to become a great rider? So that I can make these videos and give good advice. Why do I want to make these videos and give good advice? So that my viewers will become great riders. Why do I want my viewers to become good riders? so they can have a sport that brings passion, meaning, and excitement to their lives. That is what it means to have a good why. The reason so many people never reach their goals is because they skip over the why part of making a good goal. The reason that why is so important is because it's what's going to get you through the process of achieving the goal. The most important part of a goal is also the easiest, but ironically, it's the part where most people give up, and that is the process. The process doesn't like mean giving up, it's just where most people give up is in the process. Well, I gave up before that. Never mind. Once you have a goal in mind, break it down into steps. You wouldn't be able to just jump from the ground and land on top of a building. You need to put a ladder in place and climb that ladder one step at a time. The same is true for your goals. Once you have reachable steps in place, that creates the process. Since it's that simple, you may be wondering why so many people give up in the process. Well, the process has many hidden challenges and problems to overcome. And for the most part, it's just really boring. Right now I'm in the process of my goal to get good at bike control. And so far, there has been small challenges, such as floods making the ground really muddy, and big problems like my engine blowing up. You might be thinking that these problems are a bad part of the process. However, that couldn't be any farther from the truth, because in each and every one of these challenges is a nugget of wisdom and experience, just like when your character levels up in a video game. The unexpected challenges that rise in the process are bonuses to the original goal. Once I have achieved my goal of learning bike control, I will have also achieved how to ride in mud and how to rebuild an engine, all as an unexpected bonus. Sometimes, these unexpected bonuses can be more exciting than the original goal. One of my next goals is to learn a 12 o'clock wheelie. <laughs> it's pretty likely that my bonus experience in that one is gonna be learning how to replace a rear fender and a heel of bruised tailbone, but I guess some are more fun than the others. You might be thinking that the difference between a really good rider and a not so good rider is their understanding of goals, but that's not exactly the case. It's only a piece of the bigger picture, which we will now cover. What it all boils down to is your mindset. And your mindset isn't just what makes up your writing, it's what makes up all areas of your life. So, what makes up your mindset? A lot of it is the habits you build and the way you choose to live your life. If you have a lot of bad habits and crutches in your life, 
like alcohol, drugs, video games, and distractions, your mindset is going to be very weak. So if you want to improve your writing, what you really should work on is your mindset. Look around at all the crutches and bad habits in your life and begin removing them one small step at a time and then replace it with good habits like becoming a lifelong learner and adopting a healthy lifestyle. And as a plus, your writing will skyrocket. So returning to the main question on what makes the difference between a really good writer and a really bad writer is their mindset. Writer A, the good writer, has built a mindset of understanding the process of goals, lifelong learning, and a healthy lifestyle. And writer B, the bad writer, has a degraded mindset of crutches, bad habits, and distractions. Now, the next time you go to a track and you're looking at the really bad riders and the really good riders, you'll know what's actually going on behind the scenes and you'll be able to choose which rider you want to be.